What's going on guys? So today we have lots of news in the marijuana sector. We have news on Canopy Growth purchasing a skincare company. We also have Jim Cramer's top marijuana stocks and also an American pot stock that has the potential to double within the next year. We're gonna be talking about alcoholic beverages and the trends they seem to be following which could benefit the CBD beverage industry. So don't forget, leave some comments down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Also, don't forget, give me a thumbs up hit that notification bell, smash that subscribe button, and let's get this video started. So we're gonna start off with some Facebook news, which is Facebook will not allow marijuana sales on its platform. After roughly three months of internal and external deliberations, Facebook decided Tuesday to continue attempting to block the sale of marijuana on its platform. So Facebook currently bans any mentions or displays of pot that attempts to sell, trade, or barter the drug which is legal for recreational use in Canada and in some states in the United States, though it is prohibited by the U.S. federal government. But the current Facebook policy allows for content pushing products derived from cannabis oil or CBD, a non-intoxicating compound found in cannabis plants. Also acceptables are posts, pages, and non-advertising content tooting the sale of cannabis seeds and items such as bongs, rolling papers, vaporizers, and accessories that are often found at a legal smoke shop. So some people were not too happy about this news. Right here you see for companies that are focusing on creating a brand like we are that is only access accessible to those over the age of 18, Facebook is one of the best ways in the world to only target the audience we want to speak to. And it's a real loss for the whole industry, he said. That's the worst thing about this. Facebook could be a partner, but it's a global company that they put in a difficult spot. I understand why Facebook's doing this. They've already been in a lot of controversy in the past year or so. So I guess they're just trying to avoid a questionable industry like the cannabis industry, especially being federally illegal in the United States right now. Maybe in the near, near future, we might see some change. But we're going to move on to the next news, which is which is Canopy Growth Stock Climbs on News of UK Skincare Deal. So Canopy, the biggest cannabis company by market cap, owed to a $4 billion investment from Constellation Brand, said it's paying £43 million, which is $54 million in cash, to buy London-based This Works, which offers a range of skincare and sleep aid products. So the deal is a key aspect of multifaceted hemp and CBD strategy as Canopy Growth continues to build upon its vertically integrated production and marketing platform. So CBD is widely argued to have wellness benefits, although there is not a great deal of research to back up the claims. As Market Watch Sarah Toy has reported, the substance is also caught in a regulatory limbo ever since the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill which fully legalized hemp but moved regulation of CBD to the Food and Drug Administration, which is not allowing it to be added to food or drink for now. The all-cash purchase, Canopy said in a release, would bolster its plans to sell more hemp-derived CBD-based wellness products to consumers. The company has been trying to stretch that business across more parts of the world, including the U.S. and elsewhere. Canopy, which is Canada's largest cannabis producer by sales, called the acquisition a key aspect of those plans. The two companies, Canopy said, would focus on developing a new line of skincare and sleep solution. CBD or cannabis oil comes with a wide variety of wellness claims, among them the ability to soothe inflamed skin and muscles and fight sleep deprivation. The substance comes from both hemp and marijuana plants. So This Works was founded in 2004, said on its website that it was still researching CBD's potential uses. None of its products currently include CBD, it said. The company said it would make sure any CBD products it sells would follow legal and ethical guidelines and be tested thoroughly. This work sells its moisturizers, pillow sprays, and other products to customers in 35 nations. Those nations span in Europe, North America, Asia, Middle East, and Australia. So just the fact that Canopy Growth is buying This Works for $55 million, just like that, they got access to Europe, North America, Asia, Middle East, and Australia. Canopy Growth in the American ticker symbol is currently up 2.38%. In the post market, they're up 1.99%. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of this acquisition for Canopy Growth. I think this was a very good move by Canopy because it opens the door for Canopy and it's a great way of introducing the world to what CBD can do. But we're going to move on to the next news, which is U.S. marijuana stock, Harvest Health could nearly double, analyst says. So actually, I was looking at Harvest Health, and I, I actually really like this company, especially on paper. We're going to take a look at them right now. 
I think already in 2019, Harvest Health has went up 100%, but we're going to look at their one-year charts. 2019, Harvest Health was around $6.40, and at one point, they went up all the way to $14, so they went up over 100%. Lately, they've had a little downfall, sitting at $10.27. Harvest Health has a market cap of $668 million, with total assets of $643 million. So I like that they almost have the, the amount of assets equivalent to their market cap. Also, they have a price to revenue of 10.6, price to sales of 10.6, price to book of 1.3. So on paper, this company looks pretty good, but we're going to go straight to this article. Few analysts follow America's marijuana stocks. One who does is Rob Fagan of the Canadian firm GMP Securities launched coverage Wednesday on the national chain Harvest Health and Recreation. He says that Harvest stock could nearly double. So American weed sellers are underfollowed and more modestly valued compared with Canadian peers like Canopy Growth and Tilray. That's because companies like Harvest Health or such rivals as Cureleaf Holdings are selling pot in violation of U.S. federal law. Even though it is legal in, in the states where they operate, most banks won't work with them. U.S. brokers and big stock exchanges won't either. So Harvest has had to raise money in private placements and the Canadian stock market. Harvest could have the most stores in the country, writes Fagan. It has already opened 13 stores across four states and can open more than 100 in the next two years. The company has proven the best at winning state licenses, racking up more than twice the awards of typical multi-state operators with $320 million in cash. It can do mergers too. So Fagan is comfortable that Harvest can grow revenues of $800 million in 2020 from 47 million in 2018 guiding to 2020 revenues of 900 million to 1 billion harvest has positive cash flow its earnings before interest taxes and depreciation and amortization could surpass 250 million in 2020 fagan says so in arguing that harvest stock can double fagan puts a generous 20 times multiple on his 2020 cash flow forecast while assuming that harvest adds another 90 million or so in annual cash flow through acquisitions with licenses to open up 136 stores. Harvest represents the most robust retail growth pipeline in the industry, he said. He does make very good points. He, this is, um, I would say, a, a very speculative stock because he's basing that on the fact that Harvest can grow more than 100 stores in the next two years, which is very possible, but you're you're betting on, on something that's not facts, pretty much just a speculation on what he believes this company can do. But either way, I, I have added Harvest Health to my watch list, and I do think it's a very good company. And comparing it to other marijuana companies, um, it is fairly valued. So right now we're going to look at the cannabis stocks that Jim Cramer is eyeing. So CNBC's Jim Cramer said Tuesday it appears that cannabis companies could be seeing some meaningful differentiation. He took a look at the chart patterns of stocks in the sector as interpreted by Tim Collins, a technician and Cramer colleague at RealMoney.com. The charts as interpreted by Tim Collins suggest that GW Pharma, ticker symbol GW2, FF, and Village Farms, ticker symbol VFF, are buys here. The Mad Money host said Kronos could work its way higher, although that one's more risky. Kramer pointed out an ascending triangle pattern in GW Pharma's weekly chart, which measures the stock price movement over a week-long period. So he's been a fan of GW Pharma for a long time. A lot of that is because you can dose it, and you can't dose regular pot, Kramer said. And the stock has climbed nearly 90% so far this year. He also thinks you just stick with Canopy, and Collins believes that GW Pharma is the best bet out there. So there you have it. His, his companies are Canopy, Kronos, GW Pharma and village farms. Surprisingly, no Aurora cannabis. So another thing I want to look at is beverages and alcohol industry trends suggest growth in the future. So beer brands in the United States continue to struggle from industry-wide softening beer shipment volumes. This is mainly due to increasing health consciousness among consumers and strong competition from other alcohol beverages. Consumers are now drinking less, emphasizing quality drinks, so premium and super premium beer varieties are witnessing growth. Additionally, health conscious consumers are turning to low and, and no alcohol varieties, which have given wine greater prominence of late. Consequently, beer makers are concentrating on introducing flavored varieties with low alcohol content alongside with diversifying to non-alcoholic beverages and energy drinks. This is good news for premium and craft beer segments, which are gaining attention. Also good news for the CBD industry. So the bottom line is, despite the mixed trends, the alcohol beverages space looks poised for growth as a premium and innovative beverages are gaining traction. The companies with an aptitude 
to offer variations, particularly craft beer segments as well as cannabis-infused drinks and innovative low-alcoholic beverages seem to be picking momentum recently. However, higher costs and tariff-related impacts on the export of spirits continue to weigh on the performance of industry participants. So there you have it. People drinking alcohol are more concerned about their health nowadays. So I think this is something very promising for the CBD industry and for CBD beverages. Anyways, that's it for now, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget, give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, smash that subscribe button, and that's it for now. Bye-bye.